guys, it's Nicole and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna answer some questions that you guys left for me on the page. And I'm gonna answer also some questions that I commonly get on the channel. Um, if you guys like this kind of video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more orchid content. Let's jump right in. So the first question that I have is, what fertilizer do you use? Um, I use MSU Fertilizer from repotme.com. It's a fertilizer that has uh, calcium and magnesium in it. Um, before I used that, I would use like miracle Grow or something that I would get from Home Depot. But I found that that kind of fertilizer burned my orchid roots. It was kind of harsh if I followed the instructions. So I found the MSU Fertilizer much more gentle on the roots and it also had the calcium and magnesium that some of the commercial fertilizers uh, don't have. I'll make another video on how I feed my orchids, but for a general guideline, I use a, um, a TDS meter and I aim for 300 parts per million in the summer, and maybe 100 to 150 parts per million in the winter for orchids that are actively growing. Um, Question number two, um, how far are your orchids from your LED lights? Um, it depends. So I use the orchid hobbyist lights. I think they're called botanical LEDs. I'll link them down below. Um, but I have two different kinds of lights from them, regular LED lights and then spike producing LED lights for higher light requirement orchids. For the regular lights, I have my cattleyas about three to four inches away from the tops of the leaves. And for the spike producers, I have my orchids about a foot away since those are stronger. Um, for Phalaenopsis and Oncidium types, about a foot away is fine with the regular orchids. Dendrobiums, I tend to give them Cattleya care, so I make sure that it's nice and bright. Um, and everything in between is maybe three to four inches to a foot if it's not very picky. But that's what I use as a general guideline. Um, which orchids are heavier feeders versus lighter feeders? Um, I say that my heaviest feeding orchids are my catacetums. They tend to grow very quickly and they have a short growing season, so they push out lots of roots in their bulbs really fast. So those are my heaviest feeders. I'd say that my vandas are also pretty heavy feeders, um, and then my phalaenopsis orchids are heavy feeders. So. With my catacetums, vandas, and phalaenopsis, sometimes I'll add a tiny bit of slow-release fertilizer, maybe half a dose, and then I water with my um, 300 parts per million anyway. I'll make another video down the line if you guys are interested. Um, how do you fertilize in the summer? Um, I fertilize in the summer heavier, so I feed 300 parts per million, as I mentioned, and um, heat and water requirements. So it depends on the orchid. I think the most important part of growing is making sure that you have an airy mix for your orchid roots. So orchids need lots of moisture, but they also need lots of air. So if you have something in bark, for instance, it may dry out really fast, but you'll have air and you might have to water daily. If you have something mounted, loads of air, but you have to water daily. I tend to, um, have my orchids in LECA in a self-watering setup where I just fill the water reservoir um, when it gets lower. Um, and I also work with sphagnum moss. So for Phalaenopsis orchids, I water as it's approaching dryness. With Oncidiums, I water as it's approaching dryness. And for my orchids in semi-hydro, I water when the water reservoir is going down. The only ex exception to that is um, my deciduous orchids, like my catacetums, which I let dry out in the winter um, and don't water as much or don't feed as much. Um, next question. So I grow completely indoors, so I don't have too much experience growing orchids outdoors. Um, there are plenty of channels, which I will put down here, that you can check out that grow outdoors and mount their orchids on trees that you can uh, have an idea how they do but I personally think you could grow lots of orchids indoors. Um, some of the more challenging ones are um, vandas in my opinion, but um, I think in general, if you live in a climate where certain orchids grow, you'll be able to grow that orchid indoor or outdoors pretty well. Um, but if your climate is drastically different than where the orchid grows um, in the world, you're gonna have trouble. For instance, if you live in a very hot environment, a Miltoniopsis, which is a cooler grower, may not grow well for you. So it depends on what your conditions are and where you live, but I will link some people down here. Um, how much light outdoors for Vandas, full sun, partial sun, etc.? 
I'm going to link a channel, um, Precious, uh, who grows orchids in Jamaica. She grows lots of vandas outdoors, so I'm gonna link her because she grows way more vandas than me and she grows them outdoors. I grow everything indoors. Uh, how is my Neophoenicia doing in Lekka? Are they still blooming multiple times per year? So my Neophoenicia right now has not bloomed ever since I repotted it. It's actually not even pushing roots out, so I'm watching it really closely. It did really well before. It bloomed four or five times a year last year, and now it's kind of stalled. So I wanna see some root growth very soon. If not, I'm gonna to have to take it out of the setup. But this is the first time I've seen an orchid kind of regress. So the old root system adapted really well. When that old system root system died off, I'm not seeing new roots. So, so I'll keep you guys updated. I'm gonna be very honest and upfront with what I see. But right now I'm not liking that the Neo Phoenicia is kind of like iffy. Um, so I will keep you posted. How big should catacetum bulbs be to begin blooming? Um, I think it depends. So my Monurara Millennia Magic Witchcraft is enormous. So it's got a massive bulb and it began blooming from a really big bulb. But I also have Sicknookie's orchids that have bloomed from tiny little bulbs. So I think it depends on the kind of orchid, the kind of catacetum. I've had very small ones bloom and I've had like my Monurara Millennia Magic Witchcraft Triple M for in short, it's bloomed from a massive bulb. So I think it depends on the kind of orchid, but you can get blooms on a very small bulb. Next question, are grow lights enough to bloom cattleyas? Uh, definitely. So when I first started growing indoors, um, I used to just have uh, south facing windows. So I had very strong light all the time. My collection was much smaller than it is now, but I would grow Oncidiums and Phalaenopsis type orchids. Hi. I would grow Phalaenopsis and Oncidium type orchids, but I wasn't growing Cattleyas or Vandas at the time. Um, but I would get maybe too much light, but I had to filter it with some blinds or a sheer curtain. Um, when I moved to this apartment, I, my um, windows are, I have a Northeast facing window and it's fine for like fowls and oncidiums, but for my cattleyas, I wanted a little more. So I grow all of those under lights. In short, it's enough to bloom cattleyas. Um, I use the orchid hobbyist lights. As I mentioned, I keep them maybe three to four inches away from the tops of the leaves and they bloom really nicely. But I also have, I don't have these lights personally, but my mom does, the Barina lights. She also grows from there and she keeps them about six, seven inches away from her cattleyas and she blooms her cattleyas. So I think if you use LED lights and you keep them pretty close, um, less than a foot away, I don't think you'll have a problem blooming your cattleyas. A lot of growers still on their websites recommend that you don't grow um, orchids under LED lights, but I mean, even big cattleyas I'm finding grow. And when I'm talking big, I'm talking like cattleyas that are a foot and a half. If I keep them, um, a couple inches from the tops of the leaves, the new growths come in and they start blooming anyway. Um, so don't let anyone tell you you can't grow your orchids underneath lights. Um, you can use the cheap Barina lights, you can use Monios lights. I used to use those. I got blooms with my Cattleyas. Those lights were cheap. Um, I use Keyhung lights from Amazon. Um, I use those mostly for my fowls, but you can definitely bloom light, bloom your orchids. And if you're in doubt, there's lots of um, lights out there that grow cannabis that you can use as well that are much stronger. So you can definitely grow cattleyas indoors. You can even grow vandas indoors. I'm working on improving the humidity and the conditions to bloom the vandas more, but it can be done. So don't let anyone tell you you can't do it just because their experience is in a greenhouse and you're growing indoors. You can get strong lights. You can get them to bloom. Um. Can you show which cattleyas bloom from the base and bloom from the top? Okay, so that's a good question. So my Cattleya Valkyriana is one of those orchids that has the ability to bloom from the base. But when it bloomed, it actually bloomed from the top. So that surprised me. Um, it's a species orchid and most of the time it blooms from the base. But what I will say is that most orchids bloom from the tops of the leaves, just like this. So you can see there's a leaf here. This one is blooming from the top. This one's the Cattleya Hamane Gret, and it is a Valkyriana hybrid. It has Valkyriana crossed with Cattleya dubiosa scully. It's a hybrid, 
but most cattleyas grow from the top of the leaves. Um, I don't have that much experience with other cattleya orchids that grow from the base of the leaves. I Maybe the cattleya nobilior blooms from the base, but check out Stefan Van Kamp and Lewis's channel down here. He grows more species than I do. He's based in Texas and he has a wealth of information that will explain how those grow. But I think Valkyriana and nobilior are the only ones that I know that bloom from the base, but there's certainly got to be more. The last question that I have is a good one is, can you show which cattleyas have a sheath, which don't have sheaths, and what to expect and what to look for when your cattleya orchid is about to bloom? So I find that sometimes I get sheaths on cattleya orchids and sometimes I don't get sheaths with the same orchid. Some years I'll get them and some years I'll just see buds. So I think when you are blooming your cattleya orchid, it has to be large enough to bloom so generally it takes a couple of years if you get an orchid say that's like a seedling it'll probably be three to four years from blooming this one is a first time bloomer and it has it looks a little dry because i transitioned it to semi-hydro but it has one two three four five six growths so it bloomed from the sixth growth i have some other orchids that won't bloom until there's maybe seven or eight growths depends on the orchid depends on if it's a species or not, but generally I find that most of the time I get sheaths and sometimes the sheaths stay empty and don't bloom and they'll just kind of dry out. And other times I'll get sheaths and then buds right away. Other times I'll get sheaths and then buds later. And then every once in a while, maybe 20, 25% of the time I'll get buds, but it depends on how the orchid is um, how established the plant is, how it's getting treated, and um, generally if it's a healthy orchid. Well guys, I hope that helped. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and I will catch you guys next time. Bye everyone!